night of this bring memory to my mind at this time. We came from a country, Guyana, where this is the Islam that was passed down to us. Our foreparents, may Allah bless them. Our Imams, may Allah bless and grant light into their graves. And when I saw this child reciting Salawat to the Prophet I was very much moved. Because this was the way we were brought up by our parents. This is what our grandparents gave to us. Love for the Prophet No one of you can claim that you are a true believer. No one of you can claim that you are a believer in Allah Azza wa Jalla unless you love the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam more than the love that you will show to any creature on this earth. More than the love that you will love to yourself, your parents, or any humankind, or any creature as a man. You have to show more love to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The fountain of knowledge is here tonight. The descendant of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who I have the most respect for in my life. Someone. And you know when we thought of bringing a majlis of Rabbi al-Awwal in the lives of the American Muslims, I thought who should we bring? And I said we need to bring in our majlis a descendant of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first thought came that Sheikh Mohsen is the person, and when I made the call, he did not say no. He said, La Baik, I'm here with you. Here we have this type of knowledge that was passed down to us. We inherited this from our parents and grandparents, and our great grandparents, and our imams, and our teachers, and our those who have given us this legacy. This is what they have given to us. And this is what we have given to our children. Today, we have seen in the world that we live in, it has been attacked. <coughs> we have followed our scholars and our imams, and we have never questioned them. We have never asked for an explanation. We have taken from them, we have drank from the same, and we have never questioned our imams, what is the proof, what is the dalil, what is what we were obedient in terms of respect that we have shown to them, as we have seen from the children of today. And I would like Sayyidina Sheikh Mohsin this night to share some light on some of these practices that we, I have shared with him in the past few hours that he has, since he has arrived, some of the practices that we, and I may take the honor of saying that the Islam that has probably been delivered to us in Guyana, as we are all primarily Guyanese here, or, or, or from the Indian subcontinent, it was that was that came from Sheikh Ahmad Razaka, from Bail Sharif. That is the Islam that was passed down to us. And that is the Islam that we took from our parents. And I asked him last night, Tell me very clearly, have you seen any difference in that Islam and the Islam that has been passed on from Al-Azhar Sharif? And he summed it and he echoed to me, absolute, there's no difference. This is the Islam. This is the real Islam. And we can see now the trend that the Muslim who is seeking and the now generation are returning back to that well. I would like him to touch especially on the Qiyam. Why is it that we stand in the matches? For the, I would like that when our young generation leave this matches tonight, that they will know and they will be equipped to answer questions, that they will not be followers like us. We were obedient children to our parents and our grandparents and our stairs, but I want them to be equipped with the knowledge that they can defend what they do in Islam and they will give explanation when they are questioned. Majlis of Zikr. Why is it important in our life that we do such a majlis? 
following the Prophet Ali, his love for the Prophet Ali, Islam, Islam, observing the Mawlid in Rabbil Awwal and coming to Rab out of the month of Rabbil Awwal. Rabbil Awwal is a treat for us. It is not only the time when we celebrate and we honor the Prophet, but we do this in our life every day. But no, no doubt, when the time of Rabbil Awwal comes, it is the time of light. It lights up the home. Today I said at Masjid Abidin that Rabbil Awwal is the month of light. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he was light. And this is the light that he brought for us. The happiness and joy will be fadlillah. فَلِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا our Sheikh in Makkah, our Grand Sheikh in Makkah, Sheikh Alawi, he used to say this when he opened the Mawlid in Rabbil Awi. He said, this is the greatest of, of Rahmah. What is the Rahmah that Allah? Kul bi what is the, what is the, that, 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 that bounty that Allah has given us? It is the Rasul Salih, the greatest Rahmah. Wa ma arsalnaka illa Rahmat al-Alamin. Then everyone let us be happy. And everyone should be happy now. This is the month of Rabbi al-Awwal. The month of the birth of Sayyid al Khalq. He came in person, he came in this in his personality now. And he dispelled light to us. And now I'll pass the book and yes. As much as time he wish, inshallah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, the salatu was salamu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Shafi'ana Rasulullah Muhammad Alhamdulillah, who has brought us here so that we are able to recite the Quran, to do istighfar, to do the salah ala Nabi Muhammad sallallahu and to renew our iman by the invocation la ilaha illallah and the repetition of la ilaha illallah. And then we did the Qiyam celebrating the Prophet وسلم, the arrival of the Prophet وسلم, in the months of the true arrival of the Prophet And the things that we did here today and the majlis that we have here today is the majlis that is founded on the Sunnah and on the Sharia and it is the translation into action of the deen and the instruction that we have in the deen of our Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad We started the majlis by the recitation of Surah Yaseen. We started the majlis by the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. That is Quran. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He loves, He loves congregations. He loves people when they come together. He loved subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Muslims in particular, and his people to come together in remembrance of him. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, alladheena yadhkuruna Allah. That's in plural. And he said in the hadith al-Qudsi in our prophet, to our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith al-Qudsi, and you know what is the hadith al-Qudsi? That's part of the revelation that was given to Sayyidina Muhammad And you know, this is again our Prophet. This is one of the amazing things that distinguish Sayyidina Muhammad apart from all the Anbiya and the Mursaleen. Sayyidina Rasulullah وسلم, he received all the different possible forms of wah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He received the wahi that comes through the angel, Sayyidina Jibreel, will come and he will give the Prophet وسلم, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that came in the form of Quran. Like other Prophets shared that with him. Then sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he received direct wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah spoke to the Prophet وسلم, Allah addressed the Prophet وسلم, and he heard what Allah said, alayhi salatu wasalam. He woke up, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or he stood, and he had the this, this speech given into his heart. And he would recognize it. He said, Inna ruh al-Qudus nafasa fi qalbi. Inna ruh al-Qudus nafasa fi raw'i, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. These forms of revelation, no other prophet shared with Sayyidina Muhammad 
And you know, before that, before the mission, he had revelation through vision. Like Sayyidina Ibrahim, inni ara fil manab, anni adbahuka. He had sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he used to say, annahu kanas awwal wahi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yara al-ru'ya ka falaq al-isbah. When he sees the vision at night, and it becomes in the day, exactly as he saw it. فهذا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he received all forms of وحي and as well as this الوحي الكتاب المحفوظ that we find between the فتاي المصحف الكريم in this مصحف he received another revelation from Allah سبحانه وتعالى through his heart or through سيدنا جبريل or through hearing the words but also different from the Quran. That is what we refer to as Al-Hadith Al-Qudusi. Because the Hadith Al-Qudusi is direct from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different from Al-Hadith Al-Nabawi. Now Al-Hadith Al-Qudusi, it's Kalamullah. Just like the Quran. But we cannot use it in Fit-Tahabud, in Ibadah. We cannot use it in Salat. We cannot use it uh, 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 to read and you get for every letter 10 Ten uh, rewards like we do in, in, in Quran. Al Quran, Al Tanzil, Al Mu'ajiz, Al 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 Tahaddi, that Allah challenged the Kufar of Mecca through the Quran. Al Hadith Al Qudsi, Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Dakarani fi Nafsu, Dakartahu fi Nafsi. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, He who remembers me alone, I remember him alone. And he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئٍ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئٍ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ And he who remembers me in a group, I remember him in a better group. This is our authorization to sit and do zikr in a group. As it is in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ We know Allah loves the group. But as Imam Zamir said, a tendency, an awful tendency, hijacked the central and hijacked the teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad and the noble instructions of our Prophet and took it where you all know where they took it. And those people came and wanted us to abandon the way that Imam Zamir said of our parents because our parents took the teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and they held on to it and they passed it down the generations and that's how we preserved the beauty of the Sharia and the deen of Sayyidina Muhammad and the terrible and the worst attack that could happen to dislocate the Muslims and, dis di and separate them from that deen is to attack these elements that preserve the deen like coming together and passing on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that Allah loves the jama'ah, Allah loves the group. And He said, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, that salat al jama'ah, prayer in jama'ah, tafuqu salat al fadh, better than that one person prays on their own. Fi riwaya, khamsun wa ashurun namara, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 25 times it's better. In reward. And wa fi riwayah 27 times sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about qiyamah and the entrance of jannah into jannah, he doesn't say people enter jannah, enter jannah one by one. He said he groups us together. May Allah make us the group that is included with Sayyidina Muhammad Allah. 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 He groups people together. And then they will be driven to Jannah. He said, "Fi kitabihi al-Aziz, wasiq al-ladin attaqaw Rabbuhum ila al-Jannati zumara." And those people who have taqwa of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who have this consciousness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who have this central desire to please Allah and to bring Allah as a reference point in their lives, when Allah bring them. He will gather them in groups. We are from Guyana, and we are from uh, India, and we are from Pakistan, or we are from, what's the name of this neighborhood? Sayyid 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 Sayy
Long Island. What? Long Island. Syosset. We are from Syosset, Long Island, who used to come to Sayyid's house, Sheikh Sayyid's oh. house, on once, whatever it is. Once a month. This group, Zumara. We are Zumara, inshallah. But we never find ourselves a separate Zumara. The Zumra, the pole of it, the center of it is Sayyidina Muhammad. Never ever think that we are alone. He is our pole, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is our point of irtikaz. He is our point of, he's our center, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is our core, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We revolve around him like the circumference of the point in the center of a circle. He is the center, and we are around him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, he is none other than his sharia, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is none other than the Quran. He is none other than worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people, as Allah said, they tried to deflect us, to distract us. Tell us, oh, are you worshipping God or are you worshipping the Rasul Allah said, you can't distinguish between Allah and His messengers. They are His messengers. They are His chosen messengers. They represent Allah. They have no other business except Allah. They don't indicate or point to anything except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, there is no authority. You cannot distinguish between them and Allah. They, they are chosen by Him. They are His representative. He chose them. Don't you try to trick my people and say, Oh, you are, you are worshipping the Rasul, you are making the Rasul. Allah did not say that. The companions did not see things like that. Ashab al-Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they understood the Qur'an. They had fiqh. They were intelligent people. At the beginning, they showed the utmost rejection and, and challenging to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, they looked at the Qur'an, they were overwhelmed. They looked at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, they were overwhelmed. They looked with their parents and their, those who chose Islam from their families and their neighbors and their friends, they were overwhelmed. They had no choice except leaving everything and rushing to Rasulullah ﷺ and saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka Rasulullah ﷺ. The mushriks of Quraysh did that. The Jews of Medina did that. The Nasara of Najran did that. Anyone who sought the truth did that. Sayyidina Salman al-Farisi from Persia, when he heard about the Prophet, way before the arrival of the Prophet he left Persia and he came walking on his feet to go and see Rasulullah and to be in the area where he is so that when he arrives, he is there. Oh. Everybody who knew, he knew about Sayyidina Muhammad, met with Sayyidina Muhammad, sat with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They accepted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You all know about the story of this Sa'd ibn Sa'da, this Jewish man who in a transaction with the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to buy some dates from the Prophet. And he tells us that later. At the beginning, we didn't know. He went to the Prophet and he said, I want to buy some dates from you. And here's the money in advance. Ya Rasulullah He paid his money in advance. The Prophet agreed the amount for the, in exchange for that va the values that he paid. And they agreed a delivery date. Yes? Three days before the delivery date, he went to the Prophet ﷺ in front of all of his companions. And he said, where is my delivery? You have not given me my delivery. You people of Al Muttalib, you just do never ever stick to your words. 
And Sayyidina Umar, you all know Sayyidina Umar, he heard that. And he said, Ya Adu Allah, let me a Rasul. I said, no, no, not me, not him, ya Umar, we, we don't need that. Let me, let me take him. He said, no, no, we don't need that from you, ya Umar. Ask him to, to ask for his rights in the right way and ask me to pay him on time. Then the Prophet said to him, but the delivery day is not here yet. How will you come and ask? And he said to Sayyidina Umar, go and pay him and give him more than what he has paid for. Give him more. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the man turned to the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I have read the Torah. And every sign about you in the Torah, when I looked at your face, I saw it. And I knew that you are Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Except one thing that I needed to test you when they say there, that, that you are Halim. When somebody transgresses upon you, you completely forgive them and you reward them even better. Subhanallah. And he said, and I wanted to test this. And you cannot do find out this quality except to do what I did that. And I did that long time ago. And now I come and I find you like that. Ya Umar, come here. Wallahi Ya Umar. I didn't do that because I want dates. The date, the money, and half of my wills are for the fuqara of the Ummah of Muhammad. But ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna I read all of this and I saw it when I saw his face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But I wanted to test his hal, hilm alayhi salatu wa sallam. Wanted to test that, now I found it. He went back and he spoke. He had a beautiful wife and children and family. And he went and he related to them where he came from. And all of his family, wife, children, neighbors, relatives entered Islam with him. Subhanallah. If you saw him, you recognized him. This man and the people like him, when they came to Rasulullah, they recognized who is Rasulullah and they submitted to him. And they understood the Quran. And the Quran said about the Prophet. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say, Ya Muhammad, remind them, tell them, make them understand, bring to their being the awareness and the conscious and knowledge that, look, if you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to do more than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to raise your relationship from being just a person who mechanically fulfill his obligation and have this higher, higher relation and exchange with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is called love of Allah. May Allah make us all of those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, if you love me, what do we do? He didn't say anything to do with God. He didn't say, if you love me, then worship me. He didn't say, if you love me, then do sujood for me. He didn't say, if you love me, give zakat for me. He didn't say, if you love me, go and do hajj for me. He didn't say, if you love me, do qiyam al layl He didn't in any of those. You know why? Because there is... Some, there is somewhere, there is a manifestation of everything that Allah would expect of us and more. More than what we are ex supposed to do for Him in the best possible way. So, naturally, if you were an intelligent person, you wouldn't go and give an individual, oh, do this or do that or do this or do that. If you want, you want to give them the source of all of that. The manifestation of all of that. He said, 
قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعون يعني الله saying to us if you love Allah follow سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم because there you will understand what's the meaning of iman what's the meaning of trusting in Allah have you ever seen سيدنا محمد questioning anything that happened he took it all صلى الله عليه وسلم and his concern إن لم يكن بك غضب علي فلا أبالي. As long as you're pleased, I am happy to go through it all. My concern that this is happening to me because as a result of you're not being pleased with me. And if you're not pleased with me, I apologize. Please forgive me. And overlook my shortcomings and mistakes. <coughs> your afu, your pardoning, is what I hope. So Allah says, follow Sayyidina Muhammad. And because the Sahaba were true mu'mins, look what they've done. They all came. Old, young, Bedouin, Persian, Abyssinian, Roman, all of them, ex-enemies and ex-friends and companions and all of them, what they do, they come and they join Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the minute they come in his majlis, they say him, "Sit in this way." They all sit the same way. He eats that way. They all eat that way. Subhanallah. He loved this food. They all love this food. Mm -hmm. Although before that, they never ever had anything to do with that. They, they hate that food. You see some of our kids, you give him okra and he said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Many of the companions used to say, I used to hate pumpkin. But I saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looking for pumpkins. Oh my God, I tasted it, and since then I love pumpkin. Allah. <laughs> they saw him, what he does, they did. If he did wudu, they did wudu. Once he did, he took his shoes off, they all took the shoes off. He turns around, he wanted to sit and return around, they all turn around, shave his head, they all rushed to the man to shave his head. He took his ihram off in Sulaim al Hudaybiyah. They all ran and took their ihram off. They wanted to do what he does exactly. Subhanallah. That, look back, this is the important. Without asking for a dalil. Oh, subhanallah. <laughs> Without asking for a dalil, those shaitans come and tell a dalil, dalil, dalil. Dalil, what you, ya Iblis? <laughs> Go away. Leave us alone. We are lovers. We understand the Quran. And the Quran tells us, and our Prophet has told us, and the ulama of Ummah al Nabi Muhammad Israel. And we hold on to our ulama, as Imam Zamir said. And we followed them, generation after generation. And he said, when we saw the parents do and the elders did, we just did like them. That is the true fiqh of the people of La ilaha illallah. And it has been like that for 1400 years. And it is the fiqh of Sahaba. And who was our Sahab Nabi Muhammad Wasallam? Ashabu in the Quran, Allah describes them. Before the Quran. ذلك مثلهم في التوراة والإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه. الله has give description of the companions of سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and may Allah make us among them يا رب العالمين. آمين. in the توراة in the إنجيل سيماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود that's the people of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> in the Torah and in the Injil, they are there. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they were in the Torah, 
And they were in the Injil. As of course they've been in Suhuf Ibrahim wa Musa and in the teaching of every other prophet before Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi When the Quran comes, uh, he has to make reference to them. Allah says about them, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas." And all the Mufassirin say this is directly relates to the Ashab in Nabi, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu in the first maqam, and then his ummah as successors of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu So long as they behave as the companions of the Prophet sallallahu So what did the companion do? They followed Rasulullah sallallahu without questioning, without waiting for a dalil or an explanation, and don't look for that. They just followed Rasulullah They knew the Quran. Quran said, if you love Allah, follow me, they follow. No more questions. They're intelligent. And these companions of the Prophet, that the Prophet said about them, Allah says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ وَخْرِجَتْ And Rasul sallallahu Allah Allah fi ashabi. These are the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We had that veneration of the companions and the tabi'een and the tabi'een al tabi'een. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan. Insha Allah, Allah ila yom al din. We have veneration of them. And how these are the ulama al amilin. They kept to the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To the thin, central thesis of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they didn't do just. It's not just the tongue and the speech and and give you all the hadith. Not like those. Those, our Prophet warned us against them. He said, when you compare your recitation of Quran to their compare to the recitation of Quran, it's, yours is zero. There is a top recitation. And that's all they do. They sit. And they study Tajweed. <coughs> so that when you stand, and they can make fun of you. Because if you're, <coughs> Billah, he said, they recite Quran and it doesn't go beyond here. Mm -hmm. it just comes from the throat. That's it. And he said, watch those people. Because they come, they rush out, rush out of Deen al Islam. As an arrow rushes out of a prey, when you when when the, the, when you throw an arrow into a bow, an, an arrow, bow and arrow, when you throw an arrow into a, 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 an animal or a, a prey of sort, and it comes through the other side, they go into Islam and out of it. May Allah protect us from them and from their way. And may Allah rid the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, of the lethal, awful way of thinking and behavior. Look at the... I, today in the mosque, we were in the mosque, I was shocked. So the, 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 somebody announced that there was a mosque, there was a, a, a mosque that was being blown up. And then when I went to the hotel, the, the, there is a mosque blown up. 235 people dead in a mosque, hundreds of people injured. What kind of Islam? The, the wilayat of Sayna, wilaya, khilafa. What khilafa is this? This is khilafat Iblis. Yeah, you are the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're killing his ummah in the mosque. A'udhu billah. What kind, what kind of a warped intellect is that? That is not the way of our Prophet ﷺ. And this comes from, like Iblis. Why do I uh, have to bow for him? Who is he? I am better than him. He said exactly the way. Questioning, question, question. And the way of Ashab and Nabi Muhammad ﷺ. They said, Sami'na wa ata'na. And we say all sami'na wa ata'na. They saw the Prophet doing something and they did it. You saw the elders doing something and you did it. That is the way of our deen. We follow and we see what is good and what is preserved from the teaching of our Prophet and we follow. 
This has been the tradition and this is the way, the way of love of Allah and love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it is the way of following that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and creating a link between us and him. And this is the interpretation of, our, of the teaching. Imam Zamir was saying about standing up, about doing this qiyam, about praising the Prophet ﷺ. First of all, to come in a group, as I said, this is the most preferred form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ought to have time when you pray by yourself, qiyam al-layl or at night, or do the sunnah at home and by yourself, but also you ought to come into a group and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in jama'ah, in prayer in the mosque, or sit with people, recite Quran as we did here tonight, and sit with people and do dhikrullah as we did here tonight. And the best thing to do and start the day and to do, to do the istighfar as we did. We did the qira'at of Quran and we recited Quran. And then we did istighfar. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Tuba liman wajada fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Tuba, this central high place in Jannah, where the Tuba tree comes, this person, may, he would definitely be, have as that station and have that place, he who finds that he did a lot of istighfar in his book of deeds. A lot of istighfar. And the Quran tells us about all istighfar. <laughs> if you actually come up with all the different verses of istighfar in the Quran, you'll find that it is the key to everything. It's the key to everything. If you make mistake, make istighfar and Allah will forgive it. Type, if I, I don't want to make a mistake, we won't train. Type, make istighfar, yursil sama'a alaykum midrar, and Allah will bring rain. Type, I don't want rain, I am poor, of little means, I need a little bit of wealth. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ amwal. So make istighfar and Allah will give you wealth. Money, the stuff that you can do is, no, give you, you it be amwali, right? But I'm just alone, and I have my wife, and we need some children. Or the wife does not have children, does not bear children. Or I don't have a wife at all, I can't get married. I want to get married so that I can have a wife, and I have a children, and two, and three, and four. Why did be amwali wa banin? Do istighfar and you will have a wife and you will have a home and you will have kids. Type, I have a wife and kids and I have a little bit of money. I want a bit more. Greedy now. <laughs> I want a stately home. يَمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ So you will have a stately home with a massive garden. That's all in the dunya. More in the akhirah for istighfar Allah. This is the istighfar. And he said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ إِسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْمَلُوا هَا فَعَلُوا فَجَدَكُ اللَّهَ أَسْتَغْفَرُ الذُّنُوبِ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ If you find yourself you're making a mistake, make a sifar and Allah will give you forgiveness straight away. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَحَشَةً أَوْ لَوْا مَا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِلْذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَن so, istighfar, istighfar, istighfar. All, qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inni la astaghfiru allaha fil yawm, mi'at marra. And in another riwayat, 70 times, 70 marra. That's, we did istighfar here, and we did it 100 times, isn't it? 
like the Prophet. Oh, there these people come and say, where do you get the number from? Why is that number? You fools. Have you not read the Sunnah of the Prophet Why 700? Why 300? Why are you wearing, why do you have a subha? Because they want to count. I don't want to have dates. That's a different way of doing things. The Prophet saw somebody who had dates and moving dates from here to there, and she was counting me using the dates. He didn't say to her, what are you doing, Bid'a? What? Will you tell them that hadith? They don't. And then, then if you say, oh, so instead of wearing a subha, have some dates. Oh, you stupid fools. Do I have to have a pile of dates to stones? I can have it here. That's my pile of dates. I'm using that. What is this literalism? What's this backwardness? You desert Bedouin. Go back to the desert. Or sit and we will teach you. Or if you see us, don't ask for an explanation. They don't know. And if they know, they pretend they don't know. And they want to take the beautiful teaching of the Prophet ﷺ from his ummah. After we did the istighfar, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to clean and to, uh, to say that all, to create a gap and to start with a clean state, slate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best thing we can do after the istighfar is to make salah ala Nabi Muhammad so that everything after that gets accepted. It's the beginning. It's the highest thing. And we did salah ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we did the Salah ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every form, in any form, and we did it in this form. Oh, they come here also because they are people who want to create fitna. They said, oh, why do you say this Salah? Oh, first of all, salah, this is called Salat al-Ummiyah because it says, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad, abdi wa rasul, al nabi al-Ummiyah wa ala Oh, but... The Salat al ibrahimiyah the Hadith of Salat al ibrahimiyah is more... No, so this is Hadith Sahih as well. Hassan and Sahih from the Ghairi. So why don't you do Salat al ibrahimiyah yeah, You do Salat al ibrahimiyah I do Salat al ibrahimiyah You know all Salat al ibrahimiyah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama barakt ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Yani, do you want us to leave every form and just do Salat al Ibrahimir? Bas. Because you choose that this hadith is stronger than the hadith. What knowledge of hadith do you have? All the scholars of hadith say, Al hadith al da'if yu'amalu bi fi fada'il al a'mal. Even if the hadith is da'if about all the dif different forms of Salat, the Ummah have practiced it. And you can act upon it. Who put the hadith da'if and hadith? It's some other person like you who saw that this is the criteria to accept. But it doesn't mean at this criteria we abandon the, this incredible body of teaching of Sayyidina Muhammad. Besides, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya akhi, don't you have a brain? Why don't you look at Allah? Allah could have made this ummah, the one obligation is salat. Salat, 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 salat. Like in Allah knows we are human beings. Sometimes we, we don't have, we, our span of concentration is not that long. So he said sometimes salat, and he said zakat, and he said tirawat al-Quran, and he said siyam, and he hajj, and dhikr of subhanallah, and dhikr alhamdulillah, and dhikr la ilaha illa. Many, many, many varied forms of worship so that each one of us finds something and he clicks with it. That's his dhikr. He enjoys that. He does it with concentration. And maybe at a later stage, you move on into something different. Don't hold the whole ummah to ransom just to do one form of salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> we did our salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that, we went to the true purpose of our existence and in compliance with the demand and the order of the Prophet 
He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Iman la yakhlu. You know, our Iman gets kind of, you know, uh, things happen to us, to people. And some people, when things happen to them, they get shaken a little bit. <clears throat> they become distracted a little bit. They become disturbed a little bit. They start questioning what's going on. You know, uh, it's all going wrong for me. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, renew your Imam. At these moments, you should go and renew Imam. How do I renew my Imam? Iman, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Jadidu Imanakum Akthiru. He didn't say, just say, La ilaha illallah. He said, Akthiru. What's Akthiru mean? Do you know what Akthiru is? Yeah, and you do perpetually, do a lot of, much of, a lot. Akthiru min qawli, La ilaha illallah. This is La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Before we recited it, you heard the Imam saying the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, so that you know that La ilaha illallah. Our Prophet said وسلم, the best thing I've ever uttered, me and all the Prophets before me, is La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. Yes. La ilaha illallah before all things. La ilaha illallah after all things. La ilaha illallah alone. And la ilaha illallah in a group. La ilaha illallah when we are in life. And la ilaha illallah before we die. And la ilaha illallah with us into the grave. And la ilaha illallah when we raised. And la ilaha illallah on the hawd. And la ilaha illallah was at hisab first. And la ilaha illallah at the sirat. And la ilaha illallah at the hawb. And la ilaha illallah was the Prophet in the Firdaus al A'la. This is la ilaha illallah. We went to say it so that we, when it comes the moment, we depart on it. It's part of our vocabulary. We repeat it a lot. We do it. And I just want to tell you about this one, one. I can narrate so many hadiths about the merit and the value of La ilaha illallah. But I'll give you one hadith, and it's very graphic. It's, it's now I want, it's picturesque. It's like a movie. So you will not forget it. Remember it. About La ilaha illallah. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know in the movies, you know the word flashback? What's flashback? When you go into something, into the past, past, and you recount what took place. But the only person who has flash forward into Al Qiyamah is Sayyidina Muhammad. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So that you know the past. He said, Oh, when Adam was this and this and this, he tells us about Adam. Where were you, Ya Rasulullah? He was there, he knows it. And he tells us about, about what is going to happen in Yawm al Qiyamah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there will come one person before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And they will bring, and you know, each one of us has files and folders. And all the folders are here. And all the folders of, and the files of your, our good deeds are all there. And the files of our bad deeds are all there. And there is a scale. Very, very, very sensitive scale. That weighs an atom's weight. Misqala dharratin khayran yara. An atom's weight is, that's, that, that is the scale's least a degree. It weighs an atom. So this, the, the, the good deeds and the bad deeds, all in the folders, the good deeds will be put on one side of that scale, and the bad deeds will come onto one side of the scale. Remember this? فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ 
يعني ايه واتسقلت موازينه يعني his the weight of his good deeds is so heavy boom so the bad deeds goes that have you did you do you have this scales the old fashion scales do you remember them yes. should I say it? do you have you does anybody know them yeah when you put the piece piece of metal there five kilograms there five kg and you have one potato the potato will almost jump up wouldn't it this is so heavy the little bit of mistakes here fly the potato فَأَمَّا becomes heavy his good deeds فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ Oh, what about the other one? Here is his good deeds and the other one, the potatoes are so sack of potato and you only have a half a kilogram of, of, of metal here. What will happen? The half kilogram will fly in this case. فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ his good deeds are too light and because the bad deeds are so heavy. والعياذ بالله may Allah protect us ya Allah and our loved ones. وأما من خفت موازينه eh? Can you continue? فأمه هاوية What is this هاوية? وما أدراك ما هي نار هاوية يا لطيف يا رب الهاوية is one of the stations of al jannah of al nar wal aiyaz billah one of them like jahannam like sa'ir oh this is al hawiya is one of them like zamharir so the prophet says one man comes to the balance like we will all come before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for questioning and for the weighing of all of our deeds. So this one person came and all his good deeds are there and all his bad deeds are there. And they put all his good deeds there and bad deeds and his bad deeds, oof, very heavy, left nothing. Then that person, Allah says, اقرأ كتاب كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا. You don't need a translator. You will understand what's going on on that day. He sees that in front of his eyes. He realizes it's the end. Then Allah says, Oh, there's one file over there. Does that belong to him? And they say, Yes, Ya Allah, it belongs to him. Bring it. And they bring that one file and they put it in his good deed. And then that one file becomes so heavy that makes all the bad deeds fly out. As though and this man gets shocked. What was this? Ya Allah, what was this? What's in this file? What have I done that takes away all of my <coughs> bad deeds like that and make my scales thakulat mawazinu? Then Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, get the file, open it. And they open it, and they find in it that once he said, la <laughs> ilaha One time. You understand when you come here and you do a hundred la ilaha illallah, how keen should you be and how present should you be and how attentive should you be and how forward looking to all these files of the hundreds and hundreds of la ilaha illallah and should you only do it here or you do it also all the time wherever you are driving to work driving back from to work at home when you have a moment ya akhi i'm telling you even if you are going to sit and watch tv some people do. Sit and say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. If you have to. Or say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Don't let this happen in its own. Maybe this will cancel that. Not maybe. Certainly this will cancel that. So this is the value of La ilaha illallah. And we did this La ilaha illallah here tonight.
That's for the young people to come and train themselves to do istighfar and to do salah ala nabi and to do la ilaha illallah. That's for, they, for them to have this account in their saving account. And so that when they grow, they are protected by this la ilaha illallah that they have deposited with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they are guided by it. That they are looked after because of it. Because no one says la ilaha illallah so much and Allah will lead him a prey for the ibalisa of the deen, shayateen, al-ins, wal-jinn to play around with him. He said, no, 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 this guy had an account that was full of la ilaha illallah. We can't let him, come on, let's get him back. أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ قَوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم We need to do lots of la ilaha illallah. We did this, and then we stood up because in the months of Rabi'ah al-Awwal, which our months, in the memory of the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in Rabi'ah al-Awwal, what, what is the thing? We know that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting with the Ansar and the Muhajireen in Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, dakhala Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Ubadah, may Allah be pleased with him. He entered into the presence sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Ansar was all there. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Ansar, qumu li sayyidikum, stand up for your, for your master. Why? Because Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, he was from those 12 original people who took Bay'at al-Aqaba with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca. And he went back to Medina and he spread Islam. Isn't, he was master not only by lineage, by, by his fadl over them that he taught them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who had jama' al-fadlayn. He was not only that their master by lineage, but he was their master, and, and then his leadership amongst them, he was master because he taught them and he brought them that deen. May Allah be pleased with him. Amen. That's why when he entered, the Prophet ﷺ said, stand up for him. The Prophet, in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ, he orders the companions to stand up for him. So we say here, so standing for people, is that haram or halal? If the Prophet ordered people to stand up, is it haram or halal? halal. It must be halal. Would the Prophet order something that is haram? No. Would he say something that is bid'ah? No. Would he order something that is not pleasing to Allah? No. So he said to him, stand up for your master. And they stood. When Sayyidina Sa'ad, out of respect, out of recognition, and out of love, and out of establishing, like what our Prophet وسلم, said, لَيْسَ minna, he's not one of us. He who does not respect the elder, and he who does not show mercy to the young. This is the adab of our ummah, adab of Sayyidina Muhammad And this is the adab that Sayyidina Jibreel taught the Nabi Then uh, the Prophet said, stand up. We, as we know and we've heard that our Prophet وسلم, said to someone who took Islam to the companions in Medina and he ordered them to stand for him, we know that he would love that when we hear about the months of his arrival and that he arrived in the creation in, into wujud and this is the month of his birth, that we will stand up for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's as if he was just born now. Yes, he's, but he, they would say, oh, he's, bo he's born now. We are talking about the memory of his birth, and his birth is ever renewed in our life. His life is ever renewed in our life, and by the renewal of his birth date, and his birth occasion and the memory of his birth, 
we renew our link with him. We will renew our love for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will renew our desire to perfectly follow in his footsteps as Allah commanded us and as his companions did. So we stand up out of love, out of veneration, out of respecting and out of appreciation of that memory and bring it back as if he sallallahu alayhi wasallam just walked into the place and we are there. And perhaps when we walk it, we tell our ruh and our vision and our senses, um, all of you open up for the ruh of our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Rome's creation, maybe when it finds people who love it and magnify it and standing of awe and love for it, maybe it come and pay us as a visit. Is that possible or not? Didn't he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that arwah fil barzakh, that people who are, the, the, according to the decree, in the barzakh, they can go and travel and roam the creation? Of course. And so do you want you and your father to have his ruh pa, uh, pass and roam the creation and not Sayyidina Muhammad? What is the problem? So his ruh is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And... Where was Sayyidina Ibrahim when Sayyidina Muhammad went to Bayt al-Maqdis for Isra and Ma'raj? Wasn't Sayyidina Ibrahim with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in body and in person praying behind him? Then the Prophet said, when I went up in Ma'raj, he saw Sayyidina Ibrahim. He saw Musa. We saw all the Anbiya in the heavens. But just shortly before, they were with him in Jerusalem. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the Anbiya, Allah can bring the soul and the body together. Anbiya are life. They're not imprisoned by anything. They are free. They are liberated. They are engaged in all forms of communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taking care of their ummah and of the people who love them and that are connected with them. So there is nothing that if, uh, to say that the ruh of the Prophet وسلم, that the person of the Prophet وسلم, that we, we, we say things according to what people can understand. So we stand out of love and awe and veneration for the Prophet and there is no prohibition for standing at all. And the, the standing is not related because did, he didn't say stand for him because he's alive or he's a death. Here is the dalil. Because they will say to you, oh, but Sa'd was alive when he entered. But the Prophet is dead. We're telling you stupid, ignorant fools. What can we do for you? I said, enemies of our deen and enemies of Allah. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the Sahih of Muslim, he was sitting sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Imam Zamir, and the janaza of a Jewish man passed. He stood sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam for it. Oh, was that janaza? Was this man alive or was he dead? So he stood for the dead and he told his companions to stand for the life. So we know that it is not about dead or life. It's about respect. So whether he's here alive or he's dead is irrelevant. We stand for his respect and love of him. And when he stood up, the companion said, he said, it's a Jewish janazah rasul. He said, yes, awalam takun nafsa. Is it that a soul that is fashioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Subhanallah. Is it this a ruh that is fashioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he stood up, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can't you see that? No, they don't. So we stand for our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he told us that standing is a matter of veneration. It's a matter of recognition. It's a matter of love. It's a matter of loyalty. It's a matter of thanking 
the one who did us a favor. And it's irrelevant whether they are dead or alive. You can do it as that. And that is our qiyam. We stand for the beautiful memory of our Prophet We stand for the veneration of our Prophet Out of respect for our Prophet Out of love for our Prophet In the tradition of Arabs and in Islam, we tell them, when your father come and walks in and you're sitting on a seat, what do you do? Probably they have no adab. But we were raised that if, the, if I've never, ever, ever, my father came and I was sitting down and I continued sitting, I always, you have to stand. That's how, how we were brought up. You stand when your father comes. You can never stand, actually, when your father is standing. You can never sit down. That's how we were brought up. This is the adab. This is the respect for the elder. This is the respect for the father and who the father is and love for the father. And we did it as, as a matter of love. There was, not a, there was no issues in there. So do you want us, when we remember Rasulullah not to stand? No, we will stand despite you and your ignorance and your, your I don't know what it is, your hatred of Rasulullah you disrespect us. What is the matter with you? We love our prophet. And when we hear anything that to do with him, not only when we stand, we will stand and we will do anything as well for Rasulullah. That's why we stand when we do stand. And not only do we stand, we are hoping and praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, celebrating and praising him and saying, Marhaban, Marhaban, ya. Welcome, come here, Ya Rasulullah, and visit us. And Imam Zawi said, We read it, we read it. Ya Rasulullah, Ahla, Inna Bika al Nasad. Ya Rasulullah, come, we are like a family, we are lovers, we are waiting for you because you will bring delight and joy to our being and to our existence. Please, would anybody ask Sayyidina Muhammad and say, Ya Rasulullah, come. He will make me so happy if you come. And he wouldn't come. Didn't a lady, a slave girl from Medina went to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, come with me. I want you to come with me. So that the people in my area see me walking with you, Ya Rasulullah, so they respect me. And he said, yes, I'm coming. And she took him and put, and he walked with her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Didn't the old lady invited him to her house and he went to invite her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody, he never turned anybody down, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to make people happy, to honor their homes, and to honor them among their communities. And, ya he, he did that. The dumb animals, you fools, when they saw him. We know that a camel, when he saw him, rent and running for him and, and, and started whispering things. And the companion said, oh my God, we hear it. The, the camel speaking to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the prophet turned and he said, who's the owner of this camel? And he comes this young boy and he said, what are you doing to this camel? He said, you, you're making him work too hard and you're giving him little food, he said. <laughs> Take care of him. He said, oh my God, Ya Rasulullah, he, did he complain to you about... He said, yes, you're making... He said, I do. Astaghfirullah. I send him fisa bilillah, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> not going to make him work ever again. He is to feed and not to work. They, the animals knew that he will... If you, if you go and ask whatever you ask, <coughs> don't you all know about this, this, this deer? You all know about the deer. One deer, one day, al <laughs> Ghazala, and that one deer, she, she, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, came and walked, and, 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 and the, the, the deer hunter has cut, caught that deer. Tied up. And it was tied up. 
And he went to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, can you ask this man to give me permission? I go and feed my children and I'm going to come back. She said, yes, interfere on my behalf, Ya Rasulullah. Just ask him. And I promise you, I'll come back. I'll feed them and I'll come back. So the, the Prophet ﷺ went to the man and he said, she asked me to intercede on her behalf. I would be her guarantor that she will go and feed her kids and she will come back. She gave me that. I am her guarantor. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are a hunter and you have a deer that speaks to Rasulullah and he comes and says, what would you say? Oh, let her go feed her kids and come back. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at هذا الشفيع المشفع مقبول الشفاعة في الدنيا والآخرة صلى الله عليه وسلم. And therefore we don't narrate these things just to hear them like that. No, you have direct access to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And know that he is صلى الله عليه وسلم like all the prophets of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. They are alive. الأنبياء أحياء في قبورهم. He said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." ولكن لا تشعرون. But you don't, you don't feel it. They are alive. And he said another in another hadith, "الأنبياء قيام في قبور أحياء في قبورهم يصلون." And we know salat. You salun whether it is salat, whether it is dhikr, whether it is du'a, all forms of things are in the salat. These are the anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah is like that. You send a telegraph, and as I said today, or send an email, or send a WhatsApp, you do whatever you want to do. Communicate with your Prophet And the best way to communicate with him is to make a lot of Darud Sharif salah ala nabi before, and then write the letter, and then sincerely yours, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. Beginning by dear Rasulullah, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad. And put your message, and at the end, sincerely yours, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Meaning, start your letter with salah ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Start your request with salah ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And end your request with salah ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And know that the salah ala Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is acceptable by Allah. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing. Different from the Quran and the Salat. So Quran, you have to be tahara. <coughs> salat, you have to be in tahara and wudu. And Salat, you have to be facing qibla. Salat, you have to be as qiyam and ruku and sujood. And fast, you have to fast from the day and not eat. But a salah ala Muhammad, there is no conditionality, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can do it whether you need wudu or not, whether you need tahara or not, whether you're facing qibla or not, whether you're reclining or sitting or sleeping, no matter what you do, distracted or not, concentrated or not, it is acceptable because of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah wants to... Anything that's to do with Rasulullah is acceptable. And the ulama say, if you start a request by Salah al-Nabi and ended by Salah al-Nabi, Allah is so generous. He would not take the Salah and accept it at the beginning, at the end, and leave what's in the middle. Allah is not like that. Subhanallah. Allah will accept the beginning, and He will accept what's in the middle, and He will accept. So if you want a request and a dua that is guaranteed acceptance, start by Salah ala Muhammad and end by Salah ala Muhammad. And as we all started by Salah ala Muhammad, we should end now Salah ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Abdika wa sallika nabiyyumi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Abdika wa sallika nabiyyumi our all
الإمام زوس سيخ الدر لكي دواهي صلي على محمد كاوي زهر بلاهي صلي على محمد سبحان الله الدر What's the meaning? Means you know every pain, uh, you know medicine, cure, the, the medicine, the cure for any sickness, or for anything. That's what Allah means. Taweez, it is the cure. And so, if you want a, a protection from all bala, taweez from the bala, salli ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alaihi ya Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah Wa sallam alayhi wa sallam Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Rasulullah Wa sallam alayhi wa sallam Before I ask say it to uh, say closing remarks I will now pass the microphone over to our senior brother our elder leader of our community the president of Masjid Ar-Rahman brother Nazar Mustafa to make his contribution <coughs> Inshallah the hour is late and I will not detain you for too long. Just to say that um, we want to extend our thanks and gratitude to our dear Brother Saeed and his Zawz and his son. And with the zeal and enthusiasm with which they welcome us and took our shoe and our coat so that it keeps warm for when we are leaving. We pray that Allah and his angels will welcome them with the same zeal and enthusiasm Ameen. into paradise, inshallah. Ameen. 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 And so tonight, you know, for the last five minutes when you spoke, you brought the memory of my dear father when you talk about this story with the deer. Yeah. And the line goes something like this. Mm. <laughs> More than 50 years ago, my father related that story. And so tonight we feel blessed to be in your company. I hope that before you leave, you can come to bless us again at Masjid Rahman. I want to thank Imam Zamir for bringing you to enlighten us, to bring back what is our culture that embraces the teaching of Islam. To stand for Tazim, absolutely no one in this earth can prove that wrong. Absolutely not. You need no high school diploma to know that standing up is permissible. You stand up to honor his memory. And today we argue whether we should send praise and thanks to him. And our lives demonstrate disrespect. And your talk tonight was indeed wonderful. And so we want again to thank Brother Said for um, inviting us here and Imam Zamir Sattar for bringing you. And in closing, I want to do justice to, as Imam Zamir said, to our grandparents and our parents. You see, as little kids, they will have us at 3 a.m. in the morning and they will recite, and they will recite something like this. Zabase Jabu Muhammad Mo Safa Kana Malete Hai तो पहले दो नोहातो से खलीजे तामलिते हैं। But I want you to listen to this line, the other line that they will say, and the way they will do it at 3 a.m. in the morning to bring back memory. And listen to how they will do it. हमारे सर्वरियालम जंतश्री फरमाओ and that brought me into Islam today. Yeah. Not the Quran that you said. The Quran no, is excellent. Absolutely. But don't say that the Quran, what you're reading, supersedes what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because I'm talking to Allah. Subhanallah. The great, and this is the problem that I have personally today in our society in which we live. Mm -hmm. And you're sure they annoy the hell out of you. Sorry to use that word. Mm -hmm. Because of the, what they tell you. <laughs> that 
As you said tonight, what Allah says, if you love me, it's a real Quran. Love and obey the Rasul And they diminish the Rasul And that is the reason why we have a problem that we are today. Because we have diminished the Prophet is because we hate we hate the enemies. And the Prophet didn't tell us to do that. No. He didn't say that the, the, the Quran is because the Quran you must condemn other people's religion as well. And this is what is happening. So again, as I said, I'm, I'm very happy to I be blessed to be in your company. Inshallah, I'll see you Sunday Inshallah. to be in your company to benefit Inshallah. from your past time. Brother Nazar, whenever we sit in your company, we thank Allah. And I always tell my family this, that the legacy that we have inherited from our four parents, mm -hmm. when we have brothers like Brother Nazar, it will be sustained and it will be continued, I mean, inshallah. I mean, I mean. We can see that in you, inshallah. May Allah bless you, mm -hmm. may Allah accept from you, and may Allah continue to grant you the strength to give back more to the community. Mm -hmm. Close and remarks for Ahad Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Again, we would like to uh, express our sincere thanks and appreciation to Sayyidina Sheikh for spending valuable time with us this evening, all of us. And alhamdulillah, at least for the children, I ask my family, all of you, to continue whenever you hear that we have a gathering, please make sure that the children, if you need us to pick them up, if you're busy, please, I will come and pick them up. But let them be with us, inshallah. And as Sheikh pointed out, it is putting in their bank account, and this will naturally be a source of protection and guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always keep their feet firmly planted in the middle way, the way of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These words you heard uh, tonight, I looked at my brother across there because the, the one ayah that was uh, the one ayah that was the pillar of his talk tonight. Kul in kuntum Allah, Allah. And this was the ayah of my father. Imam Zabri knows this. So tonight, uh, I feel as if he is also with us uh, in this, uh, in this wonderful... He is, he is. And he is pleased and is happy and delighted wherever he is because we mention him and all of our four parents. And look, we are not selfish. Our Prophet never taught us selfishness. All our four parents to Adam and Hawa, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah please them all and make us a coolness for their eye Amen. and a source of delight for them. Amen. 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 And today uh, we are, uh, again, I, I had to go get this book because um, I know also part of the attack and part of the uh, disinformation and part of the uh, what is going on to diminish Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his household. I hold this book here, Al Arba'in, and this is uh, one of the many of the compilations of 40 hadiths that is compiled by our, our scholars. And this particular one is about on the duty of loving the noble family of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I have one short hadith out of the 40 hadiths in this book that I would like to uh, read with you. Read for you. Abu Ya'la has reported with a Hassan Isnad on the authority of Salama ibn al Aqwa in marfu form. In marfu form, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, An nujumu amanu li ahlis samai wa ahlu bayti amanu li ummati. The stars are a cause of security for the sky's inhabitants, and my household are a cause of security for my ummah. And my descendants and should be correct. My descendants, my cogni, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ahle bayt. Yes, it is related that Sufyan in Uyayna would express congratulations when giving the good news of the birth of a child to Ahlul Bayt and would sit to express his condolences when told of the death of someone from Ahlul Bayt. When asked about this, he said, one safety 
a man goes and another arrives. They are the safety of the people of the Ork from the fire. So we are privileged to have Sayyidina Shaykh with us from the family of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask him if on the Yawmul Qiyamah and in Jannah, if he does not see any of us, please come for us. And, and, and this is the promise of our mother and, and Sayyidina Fatima to Zahra. And I will tell you this. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi And you know, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to her, Inna Allah yarda li ridaha wa yaghdabu li ghadabiha. In another relation, he's, a Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad telling us about Sayyidah Fatima, whose Fatima is, at least someone is disturbed. And this is fadlullah yu'tihi man yasha, wallahu dhul fadl al-azim. He's not giving from your father's inheritance. This is the fadl of Allah. He can give it to whoever he wants. So Allah gives somebody fadl. Are you jealous? Do you want to take it away from them? Allah elevates someone, Sayyidina Muhammad. Do you want to bring him down? Then you, who are you? Allah elevated Adam. And Iblis, we know he wanted to bring him down. He said, khayrun min. You are following, full. Your Sheikh is Iblis. If Allah elevated Sayyidina Muhammad and you want to bring, you are, you are, you are following Iblis. If Allah elevated Fatima Zahra and you want to deny her what Allah gave her, you're following Iblis. If you Allah uh, 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 honored Ali Bayt Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you want to bring them down, you're following Iblis. We know who you are. We know who's your Imam in what you're doing. And your actions tell us. Your action translates the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all Amen. in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyid Shaykh to make dua for Imam Haider Ali, the father of the Sayyid. You know, Guyana is the only country in the Western world that on the 12th of Rabbi Awwal, our past president, the late Forbes Barnham, and declare it a national holiday Mashallah. for the entire country. Mashallah. Mashallah. And it became a national holiday until today. Mashallah. This is something that we inherited. Mm -hmm. That every Muslim or non-Muslim celebrate the birth, the birth of Rasulullah. Rasul Rasul They're happy at the birth of Prophet Ali yes. As the uncle of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was born, he freed Thuwaiba, mm -hmm. who brought him the news of the birth of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he brought, when she brought that news to him, he freed her immediately. And every and that's Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab. Uh, every, Monday, every Monday, every Monday in his grave, the punishment of the grave was decreased on him. Why? When he was questioned, who saw? Yeah, because yeah. because of that delight. He brought it, she brought this good news to him about the birth of the Prophet And out of that joy, he freed her. He freed her. That, that water comes out from his finger on the day of, of Monday. Monday. <laughs> so what will be the status of that person? He who accepts the Tawheed of Allah and he dies as a lover of the Prophet He dies in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will be the status of him on the day of May God for everyone here, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kids, kids. Wa radiyallahu wa baraka wa ta'ala an ashab Rasulullah ajma'in wa tabayin ameen ya Allah. Allahumma ya muqallib al-kulubi thabbit kulubana ala dinika ya Allah. Allahumma ya muqallib al-kulubi thabbit kulubana ala dinika ya Allah. Ameen. Ya hayyu, ya qayyum, la ilaha illa anta ya Allah. Ameen. Ya Rabbana, ya wasi'al maafirati, ya arhamar rahimin, ya arhamar rahimin, ya arhamar rahimin. 
ارحمنا اللهم امين اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولاصحاب الحقوق علينا اللهم ارحمنا وارحم والدينا وارحم اصحاب الحقوق علينا اللهم تجاوز عنا ووالدينا واصحاب الحقوق علينا اللهم اعف عنا ووالدينا واصحاب الحقوق علينا اللهم اصلحنا واصلح والدينا واصلح اصحاب الحقوق علينا يا رب اللهم اصلحنا واصلح من في صلاحه صلاح الاسلام والمسلمين آمين. ربنا لا تهلكنا وعجل بهلاك من في هلاكه صلاح الاسلام والمسلمين آمين. اللهم انصر الاسلام واعز المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم وعليك باعدائك اعداء الدين فانهم لا يعجزونك يا رب العالمين آمين. اللهم انا نسالك رضاك والجنه آمين. ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار آمين. اللهم انا نسالك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب كل عمل يقربنا الى حبك آمين. اللهم انا نسالك الجنه آمين. ودوامها ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار آمين. يا رب العالمين الهنا يا اول الاولين ويا اخر الاخرين ويا ذا القوه المتين ويا راح المساكين يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اجعل جمعنا هذا وكل جمع لنا جمعا مرحوما امين يا الله تتنزل فيه الرحمات امين وتتعاظم فيه العطايا والهبات وتغفر فيه الذنوب والعيوب والنقائص والذلات يا رب العالمين وتضاع فيه الحسنات وتضاع فيه الخيرات وتضاع فيه البركات وتضاع في حصول الغايات وحصول الخيرات الدنيا والحياه وبعد الحياه امين اللهم انا نسالك ان تجعل من حضر معنا ومن نظر واهليهم وذويهم واحبابهم من الذين انعمت عليهم يا رب العالمين من الذين انعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن اليك رفيقا اللهم كما جمعتنا في هذه الدار اجمعنا غدا في جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار يا رب العالمين واحبابنا ووالدينا ومن احاطت بهم شفقه قلوبنا يا رب العالمين اللهم انا نسالك ان لا تجعل تفرقنا من هذه المجالس معصوما يا رب يا امين لا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا من اهلينا ولا اصحابنا ولا جيراننا ولا احبابنا امين ولا من امه النبي محمد ابدا يا رب العالمين لا طريدا ولا شقي ولا محروما اللهم شفع فينا وشفع في مرضانا وفي 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 مبتلانا وفي المذنبين وفي من اخطا وفي من اجرم وفي من اسرف شفع فينا نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وتب علينا وعليهم يا رب العالمين واغفر لنا ولهم يا رب العالمين وتجاوز عنا وعنهم يا رب العالمين واعف عنا وعنهم يا اكرم الاكرمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا اللهم اكرمنا ولا 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 تهنا اللهم اعطنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم قربنا ولا تبعدنا اللهم اثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا اللهم ما ادفع عنا ولا تدفعنا آمين. اللهم خذل عنا ولا تخذلنا آمين. اللهم انكر لنا ولا تنكر علينا آمين. اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا آمين. اللهم اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا آمين. يا ربنا استرنا ولا تفضحنا آمين. يا ربي اكرمنا ولا تهنا آمين. يا ربي تب علينا ولا تعذبنا ولا تؤاخذنا يا كريم آمين. يا ربي يا ربي يا ربي ارفع لنا الدرجات وضاعف لنا الحسنات لنا العطايا والمثوبات وبدل سيئاتنا حسنات يا مقيل العثرات يا قاضي الحاجات يا ارحم الراحمين يا ارحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين اللهم انا يا رب اجتمعنا في هذه هذه الليله المباركه من من شهر ربيع الاول وكل منا له حوائج انت بها اعلم يا رب العالمين امين يا الله وكل منا له ما فيه صلاح دينه ودنياه ومعاده ومعاشه واخرته وعاقبة امره عاجل واجل نسالك اللهم ان تتفضل علينا بما فيه صلاح امورنا يا رب العالمين ان تتفضل علينا بقضاء حوائجنا يا رب العالمين وتيسير امورنا يا رب العالمين وتفريج كروبنا يا مغيث المستغيثين يا رب العالمين يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا 
أغثنا وأغث أمة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم ضعفاء المسلمين وارحم فقراء المسلمين واشف مرضى المسلمين وعاف المبتلين من المسلمين يا رب العالمين وسع لنا الأرزاق الحسية والمعنوية بارك لنا في رزقك الحلال الطيب المبارك يا رب العالمين ارزقنا رزقا حلالا طيبا مباركا من غير فتنة ومن غير محنة ومن غير منة ولا تبعة لأحد يا رب العالمين اللهم كما صنت وجوهنا عن السجود إلا لك فصنا عن الحاجة إلا إليك يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع همتنا إليك اللهم بحق اجتماعا على محبة نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والصلاة على نبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أسألك اللهم أن تنسر لنا الأرزاق وأن ترزقنا كريم الأخلاق يا رب العالمين اللهم حسن أخلاقنا اللهم أتينا من حسن الخلق يا رب العالمين اللهم اربط أخلاقنا بأخلاق نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أعمالنا بأعمال نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأقوالنا بأقوال نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونياتنا بنيات نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم مقاصدنا ووجهاتنا بمقاصده ووجهاته صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى يقع لنا الاجتماع به في الدنيا قبل الآخرة اللهم يا جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه إن الله لا يخلف الميعاد اجمع بيننا وبين طاعتك يا رب اجمع بيننا وبين تقواك يا رب اجمع بيننا وبين محبتك ومعرفتك يا الله اجمع بيننا وبين علم اليقين وعين اليقين وحق اليقين يا الله وحل بيننا وبين غيرك يا الله وحل بيننا وبين كل ما يشغلنا عنك يا الله وحل بيننا وبين المعاصي والذنوب والمكروه وخلاف الأولى وكل ما لا يرضيك عنا يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> اللهم حل بيننا وبين سوء الخلق <تصفيق> اللهم حل بيننا وبين شح الأنفسنا يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> وبين الكبر والعجب والحسد يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> والرياء والسمعة <تصفيق> وحب الدنيا <تصفيق> يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> في الرغبة فيما عند الناس اللهم إنا نسألك الزهد في الدنيا والزهد فيما عند الناس يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> اللهم إنا نسألك أجعل غنانا بك يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> واعتمادنا عليك وتوكلنا إليك واستنادنا عليك وتوجهنا بك وفيك منك وإليك يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> اللهم أحينا مسلمين <تصفيق> وأمتنا مسلمين <تصفيق> غير خزايا ولا فاتنين ولا مفتنين ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> اللهم كما جمعتنا في هذه الدار اجمعنا في جناتك التي تجري من تحتها الأنهار <تصفيق> وأحبابنا مع نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم <تصفيق> الذين أنعمت عليهم من نبيان ومصدقين وحسن أولئك رفيقا <تصفيق> آمين آمين <تصفيق> يا رب العالمين <تصفيق> اللهم ما سألناك ما أعطينا وما لم نسألك فابتدئنا وصل اللهم بجمالك وجلالك وكمالك على سيدنا مولانا محمد واجمع بيننا وبينه كما جمعت بين الروح والنفس ظاهرا وباطن يقظة وملاما اجعله يا ربي ذاتا لأرواحنا من جميع المجوه في الدنيا قبل الآخرة يا عظيم يا عظيم يا عظيم فآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله العالمين and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brother Sayyid and bless his family and bless his home and the homes of each and every one who is present here Amen. and their families and their home Amen. make our homes min al-biyut al-lati adina allahu an turfa'a wa yudhkara fi hasmi ya Allah Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and our homes are homes that are protected by Allah and His angels, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. And that the Rahmah of Allah pours on them, the Maghfirah of Allah pours in our homes. And from it to include our neighborhoods, Muslims and non-Muslims, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. And to reach and, and to flood this country and this place with Rahmat in Nabi Muhammad, with Lord in Nabi Muhammad, with Hidayat in Nabi Muhammad, so that the world experiences back again the Noor and the Rahmah that Allah promised. Promised our Prophet ﷺ that there will not be a corner except that La ilaha illallah dominant, Ya Rabbi. And there is not a house of a stone or of a, or, or of a weave or of a, a no house or a tent except that it will have La ilaha illallah. Amen. Allah help us from to be from the people who will bring that forth, Ya Rabbi Alameen. And when that happens, Allah make us partners and those who will be there to 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 uh, to experience it ya rabbal alamin if we go from this dunya walhamdulillah rabbal alamin allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa radiyallahu tabarak wa ta'ala ala ashabi rasulillah ajma'in wa ala tabi'in ameen ya allah fatiha